to anyone that's watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about the London Marathon 2019. Now if you're new to this channel then please um, head over and watch some of the other videos that I have here as I have been documenting my London Marathon journey for the last few years um, also including other races that I've um, attended across the UK across the world and also just how I train for my um, races so as it titled it's going to be talking about the London Marathon now this was my fourth London Marathon um, I have run twice for charity um, on the first one I did in 2014 and I achieved a time of 3.54 my second marathon I then did in 2017 I took a couple of years off because I picked up some injuries and I wanted to come back stronger so in 2017 the target was then run to run a good for age time which at the time was 3.45 um, which it still is now so so then I ran in 2017 and did 344 which then got me in last year to do um, a good for age start so I didn't have to go through ballot or charity. Last year was the heat wave and unfortunately I've really struggled from mile 17 and I still finished in a fantastic time of 332. However, I was not happy with that because mentally I was destroyed. I was broken and I just really wasn't happy because I'd had such a good training journey. Now this year, leading up to it, if you have watched my videos, I've been moaning quite a lot. I felt like I haven't been in shape for this race and that I felt like last year I was fitter than I was this year. However, today I'm going to be sh like, I must admit like yesterday i was really focused and in the zone i had my phone with me because i was taking music however i didn't really get much footage because i wanted to concentrate on the race um i can't relax i can only take footage of a race if i'm relaxing um you know i was so focused in the zone i didn't want to worry about getting my phone out and taking um any footage but however i completed yesterday i still can't believe it in a time of three hours and 22 minutes and nine seconds a 10 minute pb a time that exceeded all expectations yesterday and i just can't believe it my aim was to target a 330 marathon yesterday or should i say 329 i wanted under 330 that's what i wanted last year and so i thought that's what i wanted but i can't believe it i genuinely can't believe it so we'll take it back a little bit how i prepared for it um the actual race itself and then what's next so in terms of preparation i've been training for 16 weeks i've been doing a combination of long runs intervals tempo runs i've included races i've been doing strength training core work yoga 16 whole weeks leading up to this race um i've had a few setbacks i've had a couple of injuries um in terms of some quad pain and adductor issues right at the start of the block um so then i felt like i was chasing myself however i had a fairly good taper i had a cut a bit of a wobble um in the second week of taper which was one week before um but in the last week in week 16 i had a really good few runs and um easy runs were actually like close to what I wanted my marathon pace to be which was eight minute miles so that was really good um I went to the expo on Thursday so it meant that I had my number I had everything and I actually started packing my bag like on the Monday just so that I knew what I needed and I had everything prepared because the less stress for race day is just so much better um I did a couple of runs in race week and then i did my last run on the saturday which was park run again took it really easy but again i kept, felt myself speeding up my grandparents live in london so i always choose to stay with them the night before because one it just means that i have a home cooked dinner and um, i can ask my nan cooks me what i want um so i had um chicken pasta like chicken tomato pasta with um, salad and a bread roll and we had some fruit for dessert so I still had dessert but obviously um, not fatty or sugary um, but still with the carbohydrate content um, it meant that I had a good night's sleep I didn't have to wake up too early and my uncle then gave me a lift from theirs to Charing Cross and I got the um, train over to Blackheath so that all went really smoothly um and if anything i wasn't feeling too nervous i was feeling nervous about the race but i was more excited this year i just wanted to go and get it done i had a race strategy and the strategy was um to go 
through the first 10k in eight minute mile pace which is a 3.30 marathon and then after that try to pick the pace up slightly so the next 10k sort of drop it down to 755s then after that try and drop it down to 750s and then the last 10k or 10 to 12k just see what I had left and just play it play it by there that didn't happen like that but we'll go on to my actual race experience after this. which is the Blackheath train station and you just walk all the way up here it's not actually that far and here we've got the blue start in this direction you can see the red balloons the red starts that way and then they've got a balloon somewhere there it is the blue start in terms of pacing i just said about my strategy that did not happen at all like the start the experience that i had was unbelievable so i am um, qualified for the championship start line so you have like your charity places that you can Get. you then have your ballot spots you then can achieve good for age if you qualify with a time um, for a marathon time but you can get into the championship start zone based on a half or a full marathon and the half marathon time for females is 130 and I did a 129 half just like literally under 130 um, a few seconds last February so that qualified me and you know I went through the blue start right at the back of the blue zone they had a championship arch and i felt so special and privileged to be in there because some of these other runners are like so much better than i am and i just when i first started the journey i never thought that i'd get to that spot but there was loads of blues we had a male and female tent so it meant that we could sit inside because it was a little chilly in the morning so could keep warm which was great met up with a couple of people um from Milton Keynes so just to keep the nerves at bay and it was just I can't describe it it was just a really magical magical moment um then we got taken out to sort of where the start line was and 10 15 meters ahead of us was Elliot Sir Mo, like the rest of the elite field it was just great I was trying to wave to get on tv um and it took me eight seconds to, to cross the start line. That's how close we were. So in terms of pacing, strategy just went totally out the window. The first mile, I got so caught up in the race, I was trying to tell myself to slow down. Um, at, when I first looked at my watch, it felt comfortable, but 6.35 pace. I don't know how quick into that first mile I looked at it, but I was like, whoa, Katie, you need to chill out. So I tried to hold the pace back. And I just sort of went over to the side and just let people overtake me because, you know, this is a fast, fast field here. So just let them go. First mile, I think about 7.37. I was like, okay then, oopsie daisy, try and hold back. Next mile, didn't happen. Third mile, downhill. I think I pulled out a 7.33 there or something. Oh, I just didn't know what was going on. And I tried to and tried to hold myself back, but I genuinely couldn't. And I just thought, okay, well, it didn't feel like, this is the hardest thing to try and describe, like, it didn't feel like a Sunday easy jog, comfortable, but I also felt in control. So I just thought, just go with it. <laughs> and it felt efficient, and I just tried to break the race down. So I broke it down into five mile segments, and then it was the last 10k, because that's always the hardest part. Um, the support out on the course was phenomenal like I saw people pretty much in every single mile either through um, like friends and family that had come down to support the Redway runners um, people that like must follow like me on YouTube or Instagram were shouting because I'd like you recognize some people and then just people out on the course because I had my name on my top so sometimes it's quite hard to understand if they actually knew you or if like it, you're going to turn around and you see someone you knew or if they were just shouting your name you're like ah hi thanks but that really got me round yesterday i don't think i could have done it without that um so in terms of fueling i took on gels every five miles so 5 10 15 and 20 and when i got to halfway i kind of assessed how i was feeling and i felt good i felt okay um i did i was skeptical still at the time like am i going to be able to hold this for the next half um and yeah i was feeling okay mile 17 was a big barrier for me because that's where it all fell apart last year so i knew that once i got over that barrier and every mile that i got past after that was a bonus and for some reason i think it was about mile 17 to 20 
I had a second wind and those miles were in the 730 region and I just I couldn't be quite believe that that was still happening mile 20 came around um still felt quite good I got to mile 22 I think that's a bit of like a hill coming up as you're going along the embank up towards the embankment and that's a bit of a slow slog I knew that around mile 23 some family and friends were going to be there and that gave me a huge lift seeing them and then after that I was just like three miles to go and in those tough times I was just thinking about all the training that I've put in everyone that supported me throughout this journey I think about people like my mum because she means a lot and it just for anyone that knows me that's just a huge she's a huge inspiration so that was just a huge part of yesterday it was just the mental capacity of it um I must admit by mile 25 and 26 the wheels started to feel like they were coming off um started to slow a little bit if you look at my splits not by a lot but it felt like that I was walking backwards at points and I must admit I did even stop to walk a couple of times in mile 26 but literally my I was like don't stop don't stop don't stop and my body was like stop 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 and it literally was a head and body battle and I did stop and only for a few seconds though and inside I was like what are you doing carry on um and yeah I managed to do it again it's just really tough when you're at that final stage of the race and your body's like fighting against what your head's trying to tell tell it but anyway and then I turned and then you see the finish line and I was like oh my god is this actually even happening like 320 something what I just I just I don't think I was understanding it the whole way around I just ran and that was the thing I just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and it was just like I was just waiting to blow up but it just didn't happen so yeah phenomenal like literally cannot believe it but I do think it's down to it's all the training that I've put in it's that self-belief that I should have had there yesterday but I just I kind of guess it came out later on in the course but definitely think my training and my strength training paid off dividends yesterday because my legs just held that pace the whole way around and I felt good a lot of people like commented saying that I looked comfortable and strong even though inside you're probably not but obviously form and posture plays a huge part of it and all the core training that I do so yeah it's just I just can't believe that but if I'm like if you're thinking of signing up for the ballot or for the London Marathon, then honestly do it. It's one of the best experiences ever. Now, I can't can't say much because I've not done any other races, but it truly is like a huge carnival and party, and to be a part of it is such a privilege. So, enter the ballot. It shuts on Friday the 3rd of May. I would urge you to go put your name in the hat. However, now we're talking about recovery. So this week is going to be a recovery week. Um, James hasn't set me my training plan. I've kind of come up with my own training plan. So um, I'm going to take a few days rest. I'd recommend that to most people. Like mentally and physically, I kind of need this rest period. Um, I'm going to try maybe a gentle jog on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, see how I feel. Go along to park run just for park run and then I've got the rocket 5k on Sunday which is um part of the Milton Keynes marathon weekend I'm gonna wait and see how my legs feel and um if they don't feel great then I'll just run um at fairly okay speed but if I feel like I can go for it I'll go for it um apart from that I'm actually gonna get into the gym again properly because I kind of um in taper I reduce it quite a lot so I am going to train but maybe not run training and get um, back into the gym also going to try out um, get some yoga back into the routine again so I've not been since maybe only a week now but yeah yoga is just really going to help um, and keep on stretching um, so I'm just going to gradually build back in however at the end well it's the start of June I've got an ultra 35 mile race I've not done an ultra before so my training plan is going to have a couple of rest weeks a couple of weeks of like trying to build some double days in not double days but like back to back days of training over the weekend so that I'm doing a couple of longer runs on both days just to get used to running on tired legs and then the ultra so this next part of the segment of my journey is going to be about leading up to this ultra um, if you have followed my journey um thank you for sharing this with me because I can't quite believe that a 322 happened yesterday. I'm still on cloud nine and thank you to everyone that supported me and it just goes to show that hard work really does pay off and 
you have to believe in yourself you have to work hard and you have to have that mental strength on race day because without that that's that is one of the key segments to it so yeah 322 ah i've not even shown you the medal oh my god hold on so here it is isn't she beautiful and then thanks a billion it's quite weighty so they do the same um design for three years in a row so this is now i've done the last three years so it's added to my collection um so yeah, i'm gonna hang it on my medal hanger i've got quite a big collection up there now but yeah uh, this bad boy so thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video um, which is about recovery and how I'm getting over this marathon. But I'm not put off. We have New York coming up in November and I've, I'm going to do London again next year. I've kind of decided it. Um, I've got a new goal in mind. So let's see how it goes. So catch you all soon.